finally, part two of the Lapis Lazuli video. First of all, I want to start and, and repeat um, that I'm not a professional scientist. I'm not a, a professional pigment researcher. I'm just someone that's very enthusiastic about pigments, uh, works with them quite a lot, um, also has quite a lot of pigments. And for this video, I purchased uh, a couple of extra lapis lazuli pigments to get the best comparison possible for all of you. So let's get back to the beginning. Why did I even start this video? Well, I first made my lapis lazuli pigment um, for, you know, making paint, for selling it, uh, but also research-wise. I wanted to know why it was so expensive and so difficult to get the purest blue out of that rock. And uh, making that made me realize it took a lot of time and money um, for me to, to actually get a little bit of pigment. So I did some digging looked up loads of different lapis lazuli pigments from suppliers to make paint out of. The thing was, um, this is how I start every new color of, or every new pigment that I want to offer in my shop, researching, buying from all kinds of suppliers, uh, comparing, and I noticed such a big difference between suppliers prizes quality wise but also the look and feel between everything that it made me wonder are there fake pigments so i did some calls uh, to pigment professionals uh, people who have worked for the last 30 40 years uh, selling art supplies and pigments um, and you know we had a conversation um, and one of them said we never actually sell lapis pigment without checking it and nine out of ten times we need to wash it to purify it um, so that was something uh, you know he was concerned about as well so the gut feeling that I had might be right that there might be fake pigments in my collection of genuine lapis lazuli so let me show you what I found I'm taking you along with all the steps that I took uh, with my amateuristic research that I did in my studio. Um, it, and it took a while because I really wanted to know for sure that what I felt on the slab and between my fingers, what I smelled, what I saw. Yes, smelt. We are talking lapis lazuli. We are talking ultramarine blue. Um, if that was correct, if it wasn't a rushed uh, conclusion that I had or, or anything you know, of the sort, I wanted to be fully sure that there was a big difference. I'm not saying that I wanted to be sure that it's fake, but I wanted to be sure that there is a big difference in all aspects that I could research, that I could try for myself. First, I'm going to swatch the paints that I made before. And as you can see, they are quite pale, which is quite common for lapis lazuli since it's an expensive pigment and you don't want to use too much of it. But these last three are not. They're vibrant, very vibrant, very different from the rest. Same with the acidic test, uh, citric acid putting on there. The last three peel so much quicker than the rest of them. Please be careful with this test though, since putting uh, citric acid with a sulfuric compound uh, can make for a quite toxic gas. So I'm doing this with a mask on, I'm doing this this in a well ventilated room so just you know you shouldn't just be throwing in an acid with ultramarine blue this is just a tiny drop on a very thin swatch so it's not dangerous but you know be careful always safety first so with this test i'm going to have a look uh, how much pigment i need of this one to get it as blue as this one these are both both supposed to be genuine lapis lazuli. So I've started with the same amount of pigment and the same amount of binder.
So I'm now at twice the amount of pigment. And it's getting more blue, more intense blue. But obviously that needs a little bit more binder. But my intention is to put it all in one swatch and see how much pigment this one actually needs to get as blue as the other one. So I'm now at three times the amount of pigment. And I know this is not enough binder, but um, since I'm not going to sell this paint, I really don't mind if it falls off the paper. It's just about the, the intensity. Okay, so this is still way more intense, but let's give it a try. So I'm going to swatch these and secretly I made another little test, but first I'm going to swatch what it just made with a kind of wash, some what transparent layer of lapis lazuli, uh, so you can actually see the structure. Um, after this, I'm going to swatch a more opaque, more intense swatch to see you know, how much difference there is. And this is all three times the amount of my pigment versus the same just one single measurement of the pigment I'm suspicious about. And here with the acidity test, same thing happens. My next experiment is going to be just very simple, putting a little bit of pigment in water. And this is my own pigment. And what I did with that, and I can show you here in a big jar, this is ultramarine blue. This is PB29, synthetic ultramarine blue. And as you can see, it is clear water with just a tiny bit of ultramarine. But as soon as I shake this, it turns entirely blue and it takes a while for the pigment to sink down and make clear water again with just a tiny layer of pigments. And holding it against the light, I can already see some pigment particles falling. Uh, those are the heavier ones, but there's a lot of difference in size when it comes to ultramarine blue. As you can see, I can see some things settling on the bottom of the glass, while this looks just like it is dyed blue. It's not dye, these are pigment particles, meaning they all will sink down and they didn't dissolve in the water, right? This is a pigment. So this was my kind of uh, baseline uh, synthetic ultramarine blue. Looks like this. Um, thinking, having made ultramarine blue myself out of lapis lazuli, it is way heavier, it is way coarser, that must sink down quicker. Um, I was quite surprised with the outcome of it. Let me show you. So I wasn't really surprised by the outcome of lapis lazuli sinking quicker than synthetic ultramarine, as you saw before the two jars. Um, I was quite surprised with which one is this synthetic out of the ones that I tested. So what did I compare uh, in all the tests? I compared uh, multiple synthetic ultramarine blues, uh, a dispersion of ultramarine blue um, and seven genuine ultramarine blues uh, from seven different suppliers and my own version. So I ended up with a little less different pigments since it ended up quite repetitive. But uh, this is my lapis lazuli, which is quite coarse. This is done with a USB microscope and you can see the particles sinking down as I turn the, the little bottle. Uh, this is synthetic ultramarine. Uh, you can see some particles and other particles are so small it turns the water blue. Um, the last one is the one that I find quite suspicious, which is supposed to be genuine lapis lazuli and it looks 
quite similar to synthetic. Now let's have a closer look under the real microscope. So this is the first pigment that I made, second pigment, and you can clearly see the, the crystals. You can see, see impurities, you can see the blue a lazurite a shining through. These are all genuine lapis pigments. This is the fourth, this is the fifth version already of lapis lazuli. This is the one I find suspicious. Uh, this is synthetic ultramarine, a dry powder, and you see why I find the other ones suspicious. And this is a dispersion. Now let's have another look at the suspicious one. So here we see clusters of tiny particles with just some mineral in it, and it, it just feels off. So here I'm going to show you the spectral reflectance curve of all the lapis lazuli swatches I made before. And the uh, thing is, until you notice otherwise, they look so much alike. As I said before, I'm not a professional, but these were my findings and, you know, I'm just sharing with them with you. Um, I, as you have noticed, I'm not naming any brands. Uh, just go and have a look for yourself if you're interested in it. Um, I've co contacted all the brands and all the brands, all the suppliers assured me everything is 100% pure lapis lazuli. So there's that. All the brands assured me it is 100% pure. Um, that having said, one very big art supply, uh, shop, store, pigment supplier as well, uh, said they receive fake pigments about 90% of the time or um, enhanced pigments, meaning added dyes or synthetic pigment to a mineral mix. So having the suppliers ensure me that it's 100% real is not a guarantee it's 100% real. Uh, just doing the math for myself, looking at prices, looking at labor intensity, raw mineral costs, uh, I, I've, I've come to my conclusions um, which aren't science-based at all. It's just a gut feeling and, and just something that uh, having made it myself and working with pigments a lot uh, just feels off. And when something feels off for me, I, I'm not going to offer it to my to my customers. I'm not going to offer it as a paint um, because I would feel really bad if it turned out not to be real. So if there's anyone with, uh, you know, the same kind of thoughts about about a pigment uh maybe this particular pigment please share it in the comments down below let me think what you thought about it uh if i'm maybe too skeptical um of or if i haven't been thorough enough even uh, just just let me know if you like the video give it a like uh if you don't follow me already just you know click that follow button to just stay updated on pigment news pigment videos and how to make paint. Have a great day guys and see you soon. So for those of you who are wondering, the first five are genuine real lapis lazuli pigments. The one after that is supposed to be real as well, but I'm really, really much in doubt. And the one in the middle out of those blue ones, the one with the big flocks sinking down, that's a dispersion. And it's probably the dispersion that makes it sink down this much. This is just showing off tiny mullers since you don't really mull lapis lazuli pigment. It's just getting more pale the finer you make it on your slab. So that's that. Here are my tiny mullers.